We searched for a man named Jim Sonnet. And the legends folks tell may be true. Most call him gunman and killer. He's my son, who I hardly knew. I raised Jim's boy from the cradle. Till the day he said to me, I have to go find my father. And I reckon that's how it should be. So we ride, Jim's boy and me. Fort. Well, that's me, and you'll be glad to know I struck it rich. I heard you was in Cheyenne looking all over for your son James, and I hope you're there long enough to get this letter, because I know where James is. My ranch's about two days' ride from Cheyenne, and you better get started right away. The thing of it is, where James is, he ain't gonna be long. You just can't get used to it, Charlie. You've been so god darn rich. Oh, well, it's like the fella says, you can tell what the good Lord thinks about money. I just take a look at the kind of folks he gives it to. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa. Oh, he knows I'm funny. I ain't forgot what happened, Charlie. If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be here because your pa would have been et up by mountain lions when he was eight years old. You're lost in the hills. The whole fort was out looking for him. And after a couple of days, why, everybody quit, except Charlie and me. He was the one that found the boy. If I hadn't, you would have. Maybe. And now that you found him again, Charlie, where's he at? Huh. You sure you don't want some good whiskey to wash that coffee down with? No, I'm a one-drink man. You know that. I've already had it. All we want, Mr. Moss, is find out where my pa is. Well, uh, let's go on into the parlor and get comfortable. Charlie. Now, you do know where James is, don't you? Well, now, would I say I did if I didn't? Well, every time I ask you, you start talking about something else. Gee, it's stuffy in here, ain't it? Is anything wrong? I mean, is Paul in some kind of trouble? Well, you heard the boy, Charlie. Is James in trouble? As soon as I get this window open, I'll tell you all about it. I had me the pleurisy last winter. It left me all short of breath. I need a lot of fresh air. That's better. Ain't James that's in trouble, Will. It's me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Charlie. So now, you help me out of this jam I'm in, and I'll tell you where James is. Well, why can't we go to Paul first? You said in your letter he won't be there long. And well, I'll get you there in plenty of time. Fair enough. What kind of trouble are you in? <laughs> I'm in love. Married woman? <laughs> now, you know me better than that. There's a picture of her. Ain't she pretty? Her name's Peg. Ain't that a pretty name? My darling Charlie, with all my love, Peg. And ain't that pretty handwriting? You ought to see that handwriting in a letter. All them pretty little squiggles and loops. You want to see the letters? I got a whole box full. Well, do you mind getting on with what it is you want us to do for you, Mr. Moss? We, we got to find Paul. Oh, well, the thing is, seeing how Peg and I ain't ever met. Huh? Never met? Well... She ain't ever been out west, and I never been back east. But, well, you'd be surprised how well you can get to know somebody just writing letters back and forth. Of course, you've got to read a little between the lines, but, oh, shucks, ain't any way you can explain it. It just happened. Thing is, she thinks I'm something I ain't. What does she think you are, Charlie? A young man? No, I sent her a picture. What she thinks I am is a rich man. Well, ain't you? 
Uh, this place belongs to a fellow I do odd jobs for. This is his suit, his watch. I ain't got a plug nickel. I'm just a caretaker while he's away on a trip to Europe. Funny how a man never gets too old to figure out some new way of making a jackass out of himself. Now, Charlie, there's only one thing to do. Sit right down and write her a letter. Well, it's too late. She's coming here for a visit. She's gonna get here today on the 3 o'clock stage. Well, the 3 o'clock? It's almost 5 now. Oh, well, the 3 o'clock don't ever get here till 6 o'clock. That means it's just time for you two to get going. Where are we going? Well, to meet the stage and tell her the truth. I just ain't got the gumption. But, Charlie! You think we ought to hold off for a while? You know, that was my first idea. Let her think I'm rich at first. Really put on the dog. Tell her you two are my hired hands. Then when she gets to loving me so much, she won't ever want to back out. Say, so you don't think the 3 o'clock could have get in at 4 o'clock, do you? It's the one on the piano, all right. Or another lady. That's her chaperone, her aunt. Now I'm in trouble with both of them because I didn't meet the stage. Got in at three o'clock. And we waited for over an hour in front of a livery stable. But it won't his fault, ma'am. No. The fact of the matter is. <laughs> well. Watch well, your step here, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> would you like some cold lemonade, ma'am? Oh, thank you. Uh, you two hired hands, uh, get the luggage and show the ladies up to their room. Yes, sir, Mr. Morris. I think you must have read something between the lines that wasn't there. She didn't look the type to try to snag a rich old man. Yeah, well, you never can tell. But there's a big difference between a rich old man and a poor old man. <laughs> oh, Charlie Moss. He sure grows good apples. How much do you figure a big spread like this would cost? Oh, I, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know at all. Take an awful lot of gold to buy a place like this. And one third of any gold he finds belongs to me. Yes, that's that's that's, that's right. That's right. One third is yours, and one third is mine. The dirty double. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, there. Take it easy. Take it easy. The first thing that we've got to do is to go to the county seat and get the paper that proves that we're partners. What do we need a paper for? Oh, no, no. There's no need to be playing rough. No need at all. At all. Unless old Charlie tries to weasel out. <laughs> Come on. Let's go. I think this is about the most beautiful silverware I ever saw. Been in the family for years. Whose family? Oh, I hope you ladies don't mind the hired hands sitting down at the table with us. That's the way we do it out west. I go along with the poet who said, the measure of a man is what he is, not what he has. Why, sure, if he didn't have a cent, he'd be the same man, wouldn't he? Well, theoretically, yes. Feel who? Well, the way I see it, what a man has is a reflection of what he is. <laughs> he wouldn't have what he has if he weren't what he is. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Was you fixing to say something? Who, me? No, I just want to... Sit and enjoy this wonderful food. More chicken, boy. Oh, yes, I'd like some too, please. It's delicious. Well, thank you, ma'am. I cooked it. I believe the cook wants to see you in the pantry. You and me both, Mr. Morse. Well, excuse us, ladies. The longer you put it off, Charlie, the harder it's going to be. I'll tell her tonight at the hoedown. What hoedown? Oh, at the meeting house. Oh, I just can't take a chance of losing Peg without I get a chance to dance with her. Oh, I've been dreaming about dancing with Peg. Well, you can't keep up with a girl of that age at a hoedown. You ought to have sense enough to know it. 
I can do all the square dances with him, and he can save himself for all the waltzes. How's that? Oh, you'd be glad to help him out, wouldn't you? Sure. Well, get this straight. Any help he needs with that young lady, I'll give it to him. Now, don't you worry about me holding up at a hoedown. Man's just as old as he feels. Yeah? How old do you feel? Well, old enough to kind of want to have a nice, quiet evening at home. Okay, Charlie, you're the boss. We got the paper. What are we waiting for? Well, no, we wouldn't want to be talking business in front of all them people. Why not? Well, old Charlie might need some persuading. And we wouldn't want to have no witnesses around. No, I, uh, I think we'd better get him alone. Yeah, I get you. Hey, them pears any good? <laughs> Every bit as good as apples. Let's go down to the meadow and see how many horses we own. <laughs> a fried chicken, looked at the sunset with his friends, and danced with his sweetheart right up to the moment of execution. <laughs> hey, look at that. I hope it don't sound right with just a piano. Come on, get on in there, Grandpa. Oh, I ain't in the mood. Oh, come on. Yes, won't you? I adore ensemble plays. Yeah, it's been so long, I probably forgot how. Uh, it'll come back to you. Sure has been a long time. Well, now we got the whole band here. You got any requests? Yes. Ask my aunt to dance. Nah, she don't want to dance with me. Just ask her. They'd be downright rude if you didn't. But Peg, you know very well, you didn't come all the way out here to Wyoming for me to dance with her. Me like you're getting a bit wobbly. Go open the window, Jeff. Oh, are you all right, Mr. Moss? Of course I'm all right. I reckon Jeff come over to ask you to dance, Peg. Be downright rude of you to not let him. There's some smelling salts in my purse. He's just short-winded. Is it a steady pain, or does it come and go? It isn't any pain at all. I feel fine. Then why are you hanging onto your chest? Well, I'm just flattening out my shirt. It's all pooched out. Put his feet up on the sofa. Now, look here. Don't talk. Then just lay down and take it easy now. But Charlie. I tell you, I... like the lady <laughs> says, don't talk. House is fine. Strong and steady. Of course it is. But you do look a bit peaked. Peg, there's a bottle of Sloman's tar and honey in that little medicine chest I brought. I'll go and put a light on for you. I'll do it, boy. You get Mr. Moore some water. My, that is a strong pulse. Dozed off. It's that Sloman's tar and honey. Always makes me drowsy. Oh, what do you take it for? Pleurisy. Is that a fact? Who? Excuse me, Miss Barlow. Would you like to go in and lie down? Oh, no, I'm just fine, thank you. Just fine. You thinking what I'm thinking, boy? Yeah, I reckon maybe I am. There ought to be some way we can help this thing along. Yeah, I gotta get Miss Peg away from them. Oh, now, leave Charlie alone with her aunt. Let nature take its course. I could take Miss Peg for a walk. I get a better idea. Why 
My nature's working on them two. I'll keep my eye on you two. I don't think I've ever seen a lovelier view. Looks different in moonlight, don't it? How sweet the moonlight sleeps upon this bank. Here shall we sit and let the sound of music creep into our ears. I sure do like hearing you say poems. You'd be out taking a walk. <laughs> well, you sure make a good chaperone, Grandpa. Well, it's a cinch Miss Barlow don't. Instead of chaperone, she done roped him herself. Now, you don't suppose it's just that medicine she gave him? I mean, I took a look at that label, and there's a lot more alcohol than just honey and tar. <laughs> Is that a fact? Hmm? See, I bet that'd be good for my lumbago. Where's the Bartlett? How are you, Charlie? Oh, my, he's so stuck up, he won't even talk to his old friends. He'll talk. What do you want? Now, what do you think we want? We're partners, ain't we? It says so, right here. Any one of us finds gold, it's a three-way split. But I never found any gold. You mean you just never told us you did? You went back to the Black Hills after you shook us and staked it all out for yourself. I've never been back to the Black Hills. Now, that's the truth, Loomis. Well, are you going to sign over our share now or wait till after you go a few rounds with Colt? Oh, I got nothing to sign over. No, I can prove that. <laughs> it's not nice to go into a man's house and wake up his guests. Leave us go over to the barn where no one will hear us. No, no, no. I didn't know your lumbago was bothering you, Grandpa. Well, I ain't the complaining kind, you know that. Mm, not bad. Not bad at all. That must be Charlie coming down for another slug of that stuff. More than one person coming down. My, my, how these young folks do carry on. See, I wouldn't want them to think we were spying on them. Let's go up the back stairs. Hey, that sound like the front door. Yeah. I mean, it's a cold night to be going outside, ain't it? I could sure use a bit of that tar and honey. Oh. Me too. It's in the kitchen. I'll get her. Oh, here, I thought you might need this. What do you want to do with him, Mr. Moss? Turn him over to the sheriff? Just lock him in the barn till morning. And then what? They think I got money that's part theirs. Tomorrow we'll take him into town and let them ask around. Everybody there knows I'm stone broke, just like I always have been. 
I don't own this bread. I don't own nothing. Sure wish you could stay for the wedding. Sure do I, Charlie. Well, I sure hope you find out where your pa is, Jeff. Well, you said you knew where he is. Yeah, but I don't. Well, that's what I figured. You in so deep, you just threw that in to make sure that we'd come and help you. Now, how'd you know that? Because every time I talked about James, you switched to something else. Anybody who'd lie to an old friend is just about as low. Now, now ain't you forgetting he saved your pa's life? Now, let's go say goodbye to the ladies. We got us a ways to go. Hold a horse with Jerry. all kinds to make this world go round. Thanks for helping old Charlie. He's richer with what he found. 